what's going on guys welcome back to another video this is going to be episode two of building feed in lego this week we're going to start on the structure underneath the road and some of the buildings of the city as well as keep on going with that wall section the angled wall that i started on last week and figuring out how to put lights into the mock so with that all out of the way let's get started all right so starting off the video i had to make a little bit of a change to the plans and basically the way that I had it set up before was that the bridge would be kind of split oddly between two base plates. So all I ended up doing was kind of shifting it over a little bit so that the seam is on one side of the bridge so that we can have the bridge come separate and just meet up with that wall. So that's directly now on the side of the plate instead of being weirdly in the middle. And I think this will make it just a lot easier for us going forward. All right, so I made a decent amount of progress on this since the last video. I went ahead and redid the entire texturing and added in some dark tan, kind of like the water hitting up against the wall. So I did that all the way around to here. And this is going to be not as seen because this is where the bridge is going to go eventually. And so this is kind of just my first figuring out so getting a closer look here you can see just kind of the way i'm doing the texturing couple studs here and there some tiles just to add in variety and then obviously some modified bricks such as these rounded ones and then masonry bricks and as i mentioned we got the dark tan going along the bottom where it's wet and here you can see kind of the way that we're doing the railing the original way that we were going to do the railing was to use these pieces. And the problem with this is there's no real way to make a good looking corner. So I had messed around with this for a solid 30 minutes or so, just trying to figure out a way to make this look halfway decent. And there was just nothing that I could come up with. So I went ahead and switched it out for some cylinders. And the nice thing with this is actually it's more accurate to the way that the railings look in universe. And because we're using cylinders as the individual stocks, when it comes to the areas like this, which I'll have a picture up on screen, you can see it is a square base underneath this round thing. So right now I just have a stud because I don't have any tiles. And there are some Technic balls that I was hoping to be able to use. Unfortunately, they're super rare and expensive and you can't even get them from one seller on Bricklink in the quantity that I would need. So this is around the same as before it's actually a little bit better it isn't as clean as i would like it to be but this could get pushed back a little bit which i think would help out but coming along to the other side these two match up really nicely here to make this other angle and the reason that this works is because cheese slopes are a 30 degree angle so we have one 30 degree here another 30 degree and another 30 degree and 30 times 3 is 90 and obviously we have a 90 degree angle following the studs so that's why this works out so well so i'm really happy about that and i think that is definitely a worthy sacrifice to have maybe a tiny little bit of an overhang or a gap in order to have just a really seamless and beautiful looking angle and the next thing is the way that this fits so unfortunately there aren't any wedges or slopes or anything in that 30 degree so the only thing that i could think that would match is the same thing which is a cheese slope cheese slopes when you line them up next to each other there's a lip so you can't do them just following a regular pattern so what you have to do is offset every other one half a plate so the easiest way to do this is to just use a regular snot brick and then a bracket plate so as you can see this is a snot brick the next one is a bracket plate snot brick bracket plate and it goes all the way down and then you just add in different plates and tiles and bricks to build out the side and this gives you a nice straight line which is exactly what we needed for the way that this matches up so obviously this is just <laughs> this is not going to stay this was just me coming up with a seam for this to match with and this isn't also connected as of right now. This was just me figuring it out. But as you can see, you slide that in there and it actually looks 
pretty nice. Like, you get pretty far away, and you can't even really see the seam. So that is exactly what we're looking for. And it's just a really satisfying technique. And to see this whole thing just come together so seamlessly is really rewarding. That is what we got going on so far. And we'll keep it on going. So last week I mentioned this dome. And I said that I wanted to make it look a little bit better. And I also said that I had an idea that I wanted to try. Well, basically my idea was to use clips to make kind of like a base all the way around. And I was originally going to still keep it kind of like sunken in how I had it before and then just put the clips on the outside of the sphere. But the math didn't end up lining up. So there was either a gap or it was just too big and too loose. So then I actually ended up taking the clips and putting them on the underneath where these teeth are and they go right over this and meet up flush with the bottom of the sphere. And this worked out better than I could have ever imagined because now you don't have the full two plate sticking out. It's more like one and a half. So it looks a lot better. And then we just put a little bit of gold on the top here with some sand green as like a spire. Because if you leave this off, it ends up just kind of looking a little weird. Like why is there a ring at the bottom? So you put this on and then suddenly now it makes sense. And then the way this is connected is there's a Technic axle going through here because there's like a half plate gap. So you just stick a Technic axle on some round two by two bricks and then you attach it into the top here. And then when you push it down, then it lines up. And then the ring is just one by one clips and then the hinge part. And these are all exist in the gold color. Like you can see here, this is the, this is how it's supposed to look. I only have one of the clips though. So I'm buying a bunch of the clips to finish out this ring. So it all looks like that. And then you just take this and you kind of start at one of the teeth and then you just go work your way around all of the teeth and just push it up so that it matches up flush with the sphere. And then take the underside of those two by two bricks and line it up with the axle. And then when you push it down, it meets up flush with the base. And this is just absolutely beautiful. I'm so happy with this. And another thing also that I realized, this isn't actually the Naboo sphere. I think this is from Yavin 4. So I said that in the first video, I think that I was wrong. This is actually from Yavin 4, I'm pretty sure. And then the other sphere, I haven't started making a smaller one yet. I'm not sure exactly how I want to do that. And the stud one hasn't changed yet. So this is the only thing I have to update so far. The other thing I noticed while I was at the Lego store is they had one of the new Rivendell sets on display. And there are actually a few new recolors in sand green for that set. One of them being these arch pieces. And I checked on Bricklink and on Pick a Brick Online, and they're not available yet. So once those come out, as long as they're not like $3 per piece, I might look into trying to get some of those. Because I've used that design in tan on my Tatooine to make a sphere, and it actually looked really nice. So I might look into that, see if I can get those when that set releases and people start to part it out. All right, next up, we got a little bit of a haul. This is actually from a third party, non-affiliated Lego restore. So they have a bunch of parts in random bins that you can look through and pick out. And they have kind of a similar pick a brick system, except theirs is actually a better value than Lego stores, as well as they have some figures. So starting off with the figures, I got two Rogue One Stormtroopers and a shadow trooper of the same style every time i see one of the rogue one stormtroopers i always buy it if it's a good price and these guys were like six bucks or something so that was a no-brainer for me and the other figs that we got are a scout a 212th clone trooper from 2014 and a realistic yoda i've been wanting a realistic yoda for a while and the only ones that I have are the Clone Wars ones and the really old like 1999 version of Yoda. 
All of the figs were really good prices, so I couldn't resist getting them while I was there. So I just finished sorting out all of the pieces that I got from the store. And the nice thing with ReStores as opposed to Lego stores is the variety of pieces that you can get there. It's just really nice when you know what you need. You can just sit there and pick through. So I got a ton of modified bricks, some snot bricks, different kinds, a bunch of plates and jumpers and tiles, and then a ton of these cylinders, some more bricks, and a ton of different kinds of arches just for windows and doors and stuff. And then they had a couple cool colors like this yellowish green and the light aqua color. And then I got some sand green parts and a couple printed pieces that I just thought were cool. So definitely worth it. I think I paid like $20 for all of this. And the fact that you don't have to wait for something to come in the mail or pay for shipping is just really an added bonus and makes this a really convenient way to get parts. All right, so I just got in a really important package. This is from Light My Bricks, and it's gonna make me be able to use the LEDs that I have. It should be the battery box, connecting cables, and then the terminals that you plug in all of the lights to. Let's just open this up right here. All right, so it comes in this Light My Bricks packing envelope as you can see here Let's cut through here too all right there we go we got paper and a few different packages so the first thing is an invoice and then here obviously you can see the battery pack and this is one of the boards it has a bunch of different little ports that you can plug the LED strips into. And that should be compatible with the ones that I have, but obviously I'll have to test that out. So we got one, two, three, and four of those. And then these are just the connecting wires, the cables to go from the battery box into the boards and then to connect all of the boards together. So. I'm going to get this stuff all opened up and test it out and see what happens. So I've been fiddling around with the lights that I bought and on feed there are some street lamps that run down either side of the street and I'll have a picture up on the screen here. Now the best design for this would be to use the new candle pieces in black and then you could use the cylinder and it would be a little bit bigger than the stock going up to the top. However, you can't run lighting or wires through that. And we didn't want to use cylinder bricks because then you would see the indent underneath each individual brick. So what we came up with was to use these. These are the Technic link connectors. They are the Technic pins that just go through. And these Technic pins are actually hollow, as you can see there. So you can run one of these wires all the way down through the middle and then the one at the very top is a light gray connector with a stud on it so that you can attach your cylinder and what you do is you take your light and you kind of push it all the way down like this so now it's going all the way up here here you can see the actual light part then you take your cylinder and put it over the top and then you take a black one by one round tile. I was thinking about using the fez piece to get some of like a rounded kind of idea. So I'm not sure if that's gonna be what I do or if I just stick with this. Run the light through one of these round plates like this and connect that onto the bottom here. And then you take that through the Technic plate, connect that. So you take some bricks, you put your Technic plate, and then you just take your 4x4 plate and slide it all the way down like this. And what you're left with is this. And there's no real gaps, you don't really see anything going on. And if you put some plates or tiles, it would just match right up. So that was the idea, and then it just goes all the way up here. It's a nice 
even straight stock with no bumps or ridges and then you take your light and the way that these plug in to the connectors is very one way you can't do it the other way otherwise it will break so we're going to go ahead and connect this into the board like so and once it goes in it'll kind of snap in and then you can go ahead and turn on your battery pack and there you go this one is on and obviously that one is too this one is shining pretty much right at the camera this one is shining kind of off all of the lights kind of shine in one direction so i'm going to face them on the inside of the mock like if this is up against one of the houses i'm going to point it so that it's facing in towards the street and same thing with this one so that when you're looking down the street that's the brightest part but yeah so that's basically how i'm going to be doing the lighting for this mock all right guys so i have made a ton of progress since the last time you guys have seen this the last time you saw this this whole railing was not finished and there was still a big gap here and one here originally the way i had this whole angled section connected was just by studs sticking up through here but it makes it very limited the way that you can position this so what did i ended up doing was using clips attached to the back which i'll show you in a second and then i can angle the clips however i need to suck it in or move it or adjust it any way that i want and it's still really stable so i'm going to spin this around and show you guys the back side as you can see there's a lot going on here i ended up putting in this long blue technic brick to keep the wall rigid and so it doesn't like bend or bow in the middle so now this whole thing is rigid and it's not going anywhere. And then I took some Technic pins and some bars and clips and just attached in two different areas the wall. So it doesn't spin one way or another. It's two points of contact, so it's not going anywhere. So basically it's just this arm clip thing connected to some clips and bars. And then basically the way this works is if I spin this out, it pushes the wall out. And so I can turn it in like that, and that just sucks the wall in completely. So that is basically the technique that I used for this. And what it ends up doing is creating a perfect seam all the way down. So I can go ahead and pop this out for now. So it goes all the way up here. This is another good seam. And if we want that to be tighter, we can spin this a little bit and then that just sucks that side in too so that is i'm really really happy with that now there's no gaps or anything and then the other thing is i finished the railing going all the way around i went to that lego store as i showed you guys got a bunch of the cylinders and some of these one by one round stud tiles just so i could finish off the railing and i really like how it looks i like how the square bricks stand out every once in a while from the cylinders and it's actually a six cylinder spacing that goes kind of all the way around to give it an even space between the square parts and then the next part after doing this was i had to reevaluate a little bit how i was going to fill in the gray so i kept this and the only thing i did was i added on tiles to the back here and so this still sits in that corner like that. And then for this next side, I was going to use more cheese slopes, but I realized that this is a 30 degree angle here because there's one cheese slope, but this is actually a 60 degree angle because there's two meeting. So one by three slopes are actually 60 degrees on this side like this. So what I ended up doing was I tried putting them this way first to hide kind of the bumps on the edges of the slopes and what I found out was then I was going to have this angle that I would have to deal with and that wasn't going to be fun so I ended up just keeping it simple and putting it flat so then this seam matches up here and this seam matches up here and then what I did was I just made this long thing of tiles and sat it up next to it and at this point I was almost ready to call it a day 
but I wasn't super happy with the gaps and the slopes. And it's not really that bad once you get kind of far out, but if you look at it straight down, it does stand out pretty badly. And because I cared so much about the cheese slopes, for me to just kind of give up on this section, I wouldn't really have been too excited about that. So what I ended up doing was, I moved this back, like so, and then I made this. This is a bunch of panels connected to each other with the snot bricks. And then at the bottom, there's a little indent that goes around that cylinder right there so what you do is you take it like this and you slide it in like that and then it covers up that whole gap and originally i thought this was going to stand out too much because it's a height elevation and i thought that would look weirder than just having a little bit of gaps in between but actually once you get kind of far away you really don't even see it and it kind of makes sense for there to be a little bit of like a sidewalk or an elevation or something for water flow because obviously if your entire road is all the same layer you would just have a huge flooding problem so it's a little bit of an elevation step and then i had this little area that i wasn't really too happy with but i figured out that it wouldn't really be an issue because i want to have a building here anyways so what i did was i just made this really rough foundation that isn't obviously going to stay but just as a placeholder and then you go ahead and put this on here. And this little tile here that I put there is just to cover in this little half plate gap. So that fixes that problem and this fixes this entire problem. And this is obviously connected to the regular lay of plates. So now at this point, I should be completely golden for the rest of the progress. And as you can see, that doesn't really even look like anything more than just a seam. So I'm really happy with that. And then that's basically it. I went and made this entire section over here before it was not completely done. And then I put railings all over the top of it and finished the entire first corner section. So I am really, really, really happy with how this looks. And as you can see, just kind of getting a little bit of a farther away perspective it just really looks nice so i'm super duper excited and happy with this and for the last segment i just want to go over some minifigures that i threw together that are going to be just some civilians on the streets of Thede, and probably they're going to be kind of just marched by battle droids that's why i have some of them in handcuffs but these are all just random guys that i threw together this guy all the way on the left is going to be like a Naboo pilot. This is just, this isn't actually a pilot figure, but I just found it at the Lego store and made kind of like a build a mini kind of fig. And it looks pretty good. Looks actually really similar to the pilot from Naboo. So that is going to be a pilot that I have just kind of walking around or sat down by some droids. And then the next we have a nice dark red uniform kind of guy dark blue then we have a white dressly a rhodian weak way two kind of nice girls and another rhodian and a kind of robed dude i tried to distinguish this guy from a jedi but he kind of looks like a jedi obviously i'm using jedi robes for his main torso and i thought about having him in handcuffs but it ended up kind of looking weird so we're just gonna pretend like he's not actually a Jedi, but that is what I got going on so far. And most of these kind of have like a bright and colorful color scheme, except for a few of them being like dark brown and just natural earth tones. But if you look at the civilians on Naboo, they're all wearing bright colors and vibrant colors. So that's why I tried to use a bunch of reds and blues and greens and just make them all kind of stand out and pop a little bit. So these are all of the guys that I came up with and probably not all of these will be used because the main focal point of the mock is going to be like the battle scene. So it won't really make sense to have a ton of civilians on the streets. There will probably be like maybe four or five just kind of the favorite ones that I made and I'll just pick out those and have them be 
march down the street by battle droids or just kind of sitting in groups or something like that. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up episode two of Building Feed. As I said in the previous video, guys, we got a ton of progress done this week. I finished that entire corner with the angled section and all of the funky angles and things that I had to figure out. So I'm really happy with how that came out. And I'm also super excited to have it done because everything else is on the regular stud layout. I don't have to try and figure out any other weird angles in the rest of the floor or the walls, which is super nice. We also touched on the domes from the last episode. I figured out a really nice design for the planet sphere, which I'm actually super happy with. That's way better than I was really hoping for it to turn out. So I'm super excited about that, as well as some figures for the mock just to populate it, some civilians and stuff, and then the lights. The lights were something that I was working on for a couple days, and I'm really happy with the way that those street lamps turned out. As I said, I might try and use the Fez piece just on the top of it to add a little bit more character, but I'm not sure about that. So stay tuned for any future updates with the lights. And if you guys are interested in the lights that I'm using in this mock, the link at the top right corner of the screen will give you $10 off your first purchase at Light My Bricks. And that is going to just about wrap up this video, guys. So thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are definitely going to want to stay tuned for episode three coming next Sunday. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.